So this is our formula. Um, we don't want to be writing all these words in physics, uh, especially if I might need to use this formula to find mass and then use the mass of an object to find something else in a separate formula. I'm going to want to use um, algebra if I do that. I'm going to want to use symbols. So we've got standard symbols for all of these quantities. The standard symbol for mass is a lowercase m and the standard symbol for volume is a capital V. The examiner probably won't notice if you do a lowercase v or a capital M, but just be careful because that is what it should be. But of course, in an exam, it will say, write down the formula that links, and if it, it's a mass, then it will say brackets, lowercase m. So you just copy what they've given you in the in the paper. I've left this bit out, though, because the symbol for density is a letter that you probably haven't come across before, unless you're Greek or something, because it's a Greek row. Um, it's a... The way I draw it is to put a slant on the on the kind of stalk bit, but that's not the way that you'd necessarily see if it was if you uh, I don't know Google what Greek row looks like. It won't necessarily look like that. That's quite my my kind of font, my handwriting um, writes it. But there you go. Um, you might actually have seen this symbol before um, because it's Catholic school, isn't it? And so you might have seen this symbol in RE, and that is a chi row, and this is the Greek for ch, and this is the Greek for R, and so it's the first three letters of Christ. So you might have seen that symbol before, but um, yeah, we we've, we don't use Latin letters for it. We use this, this, this Greek letter. Um, okay, so you can see with this then that if I've got a larger mass, I've got a larger density. And if I've got a larger volume, all that's going to do to this fraction is it's going to reduce it. It's going to make it smaller. Yeah, so if I had, um, if this was one and this was two, that'd be half. If this was one and this was four, it'd be a quarter, so it's going to be smaller. So the larger this value is, this volume, the smaller the density is going to be if we keep the mass the same. And so this formula actually makes sense with what we know about the world already. I've got a coin here, I've got a, a wooden button. The coin has more mass than the, it's, it's heavier than the, the wooden button. We know instinctively the coin's more dense. Um, they're about the same size. So what I've done in terms of the formula is that if I increase the mass, then I've increased the volume, the, the density, sorry. And so the, the, the coin is more is the more dense object. Um, I've also I've got this um, bag of rice. This bag of rice has a mass of 500 grams. Of course, if you're in the kitchen, you'd say it had a volume of, uh, sorry, you'd say it had a weight of, of 500 grams. But in physics, we use the word mass for this. And I've got this block of metal, which has a mass of 500 grams. This is actually, I've just nicked this off my um, scales. Um, old-fashioned kind of balancing type scale. So this is 500 grams, this is 500 grams. They've got the same mass, but clearly the volume of the bag of rice is much larger. So the the the, the weight, this, this block of metal, is more dense. The bag of rice is something that's less dense. So if I then with this say I've, I've um, with the bag of rice, the volume is larger, um, that means that the density is lower, and so the density of my, my bag of rice is, is smaller. So anyway, um, that formula kind of all fits together and kind of makes sense. Um, and this is it, this is the formula. Um, it would be a good idea to write this down somewhere. What I like to tell my students to do is write the formula in symbol form and then um, annotate it. So you only have to write it out once, but it's up to you. It's your exercise book. Um, I'm certainly not going to check it. I don't know if you're, if you don't have me as a physics teacher, maybe it'll be checked. But there you go. Um, and but most of what we're going to do actually is is going to be on the worksheet that goes with the the experiment, which we're going to do now. Okay, so I've got my stuff together. Got my results table. You don't have to print it out. You can do it on the computer. It's fine. I'll print it out. Um, I've got a balance or scales. We call them in the kitchen. Don't read, really, but we call it a balance in science. Um, these bit of a funny design, they don't have a pan on the top, but they're going to work fine for me. Um, so electric is better, but if you haven't got um, that, then that you'll be fine with something like this maybe, which is um, just some balancing, old fashioned balancing um, scale, kitchen scales. Um, hopefully you've got something that can measure, that can measure um, weight, we call it in the kitchen, but it's actually mass in physics. Properly, I've got my ruler, um, I've got my measuring jug, which I'm going to use later. And I've also got, actually, I've managed to find this, this pot that's got um, milliliter markings going, going up. It's much smaller, so I can find the, the, um, the volume of, of, of smaller objects uh, more accurately. But we'll do that later on. Um, I've got my objects as well. We'll start with the density of a regular shaped solid, just because it's the top results table. My chosen regular shaped solid is this massive cube of wood. I think it's oak. Um, a, a big bit of wood that's that's kind of square 
is a good option, um, but you could go smaller than that. You could go for something like a nine volt battery. That's a fairly regular shape. I think you could measure the, the size of that with a ruler quite well. Um, maybe a dice from a from a kind of board game. That's gonna be hard to measure the mass of. It's only gonna be like a couple of grams. If you've got electric um, scales, though, you might be okay with that. Um, but basically anything that's kind of square and, um, and ideally actually um, one kind of thing. So nine volt battery is not quite as good as this block of wood because I can see if I'm right with this block of wood. I can Google what is the density of oak and um, and we can see how, how accurate we've been at the end. It's not completely necessary, you don't have to do that. So a nine volt battery, that sort of thing would be fine. Um, potentially I've got this cylinder, so I could, if I know the formula for working out the volume of a cylinder, could use the ruler to work out the volume of this. This is actually part of a Mulkey set, you know, a Finnish Skittles game that you play in the summer sometimes. Um, right, so I'm gonna start off with my block of wood then. It's, so, I'm just gonna do this whole thing so that you can, um, in the same way that I expect you guys to do it. So type of solid, um, wood block, um, mass, right. So it's asking for the mass first. So I'm just gonna turn the, um, turn my scales on, balance, whatever, put the um, block of wood on, and I've got 648 grams. So it says mass in, I need units here. Um, so I can put, just put a G for grams in there. That should be okay. Um, we might want to, in physics, do this in kilograms. And normally we have everything in standard units and I make, really, I make sure we have everything in standard units. Um, they'll ask you what units you want, they want it in an exam, but actually grams per centimetre cubed is one of the standard units for density. So it's fine to just do it in grams and centimetres. Um, that's what we're gonna do because it's easier. But actually um, kilograms per metre cubed is also a standard unit for density. So as long as you know what units you're working in, it's fine. Length, width, and height. We're gonna do that in centimeters as well. I'll write that on in a second, but we've got um, 9.6 centimeters. Um, the height is 9.6 centimeters. It's a cube, remember, so I'm expecting that. <laughs> and the and the, 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 um, the width is um, 9.6 centimeters. So for all of them, because it's a cube, I can just write in here, and I've done this in centimeters, remember. I can write in 9.6 for all of them. Okay, and then the volume, if I times all these together, I'm gonna to get a volume in centimeters cubed. So I'm gonna write centimeters cubed up there for my unit, um, and we're gonna times these three numbers together. Okay, now I've got all my data. Um, the density of this, and it doesn't actually really matter where you write it. In fact, I'm gonna edit the worksheet before I send it out and put um, um, something to the right so we can find out what the density is. But the density of my block of wood will be the mass divided by the volume. The mass uh, was 650 grams. The volume was 884.7. And then I can calculate the density of oak. 0.735 grams per centimetre cubed. Let's have a, a look. And uh, this grams, this oh dear, this is kilograms per meter cubed. Is that a thousand? So that actually brings us to the same the same unit system as we've got. So it says between zero point six and zero point nine, and our our value was or my value even was zero point seven three five. I'm saying R, but that's my value. You're going to find your own for whatever your um, object is. And if it's not a regular object, then you don't have to um, you don't have to compare it to a, a value online. I'm just doing it because it's interesting. Moving on to the density of an irregular shaped solid. So for my irregular shaped solid, I have got a mild steel bolt. It's, I've got mild steel, so I can just Google density of mild steel at the end. Um, but if you've got something that's not the, a solid material all the way through, that you can still do the experiment. You just can't compare it with, a, with an accepted value online. Um, so I'm gonna put these, I've actually got four because they're not very big and it will make it more accurate if I've got four. So I'm gonna put these on here. And four um, steel, mild steel bolts have a mass of 95 grams. 95 grams, great. So to find their volume, I can't measure this with a ruler. Um, or I, I mean, I could actually, but it'd be very difficult, very complicated, um, you know, hexagonal based prism. 
Um, it's complicated to find the, the, the volume of that. So let's find the volume of an irregular shape, and it could this could be like a rock, you know, you know if so we do need to find the method of, of doing something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some water in this pot and I'm gonna drop the bolts in, and what will happen is um, the, the water level will rise when I drop the bolts in, and it will rise by the same volume of the bolt itself. So that means that I can then work out what the volume of the of the steel bolt is. How much water is in here? 64 um, millilitres. Um, so I've got 64 millilitres. I'm just going to write 64 in here. And that's in, um, in millilitres on here, but actually, as it says at the top of the worksheet, one millilitre is the same as one centimetre cubed. So I've put my units centimetres cubed. I'm just working that. Um, so volume water after the sample added. So I'm going to add my sample, which is these four bolts. And the sample then is, uh, sorry, once I've added the sample, I'm on 78. Um, reading from the bottom of the meniscus, like a good, like a good chemist um, or scientist, because I, I guess I'm doing it now in physics. So it's physics as well, isn't it? And um, 78. And so the volume of the sample will be this, take away this, 14 um, centimetres cubed. Right, so now I've got, the, the mass again, I've got the volume, so I'm going back to my formula, density is equal to mass divided by volume. The mass was 95, the volume was 14, and so I can work out the density of steel. Okay, so I got 6.8 grams per centimetre cubed. Um, let's just have a look. If it, there are different types of steel, um, just go for mild steel. If you've got something that's made of steel, just go for something, just go for mild steel. Right, so I got 6.8, they've got 7.85. It's pretty close, it's not quite as close as the, the oak. Okay, last one then, which is the density of a liquid. So type of liquid, washing up liquid. Now, I probably can't Google density of washing up liquid and find something sensible online. Um, you might want to use maybe oil, you could then, if you used, if you used like vegetable oil or something, then you would be able to find the density of it online but it's gonna make a mess and it's probably not a good use of vegetable oil. Now you could turn the scales on whilst the pot is on there and then it will read zero, even though there's something already on there. I've accidentally put it in pounds and ounces, here we go. So it, it will read zero now, even though the even though this pot's on there. And so I can put the washing up liquid in and then whatever value is on here will be the volume of washing up liquid. What the worksheet instructs you to do is to find the mass of your container and then find the mass of the container and the liquid and then do a subtraction to find the mass of just the liquid. That is unnecessary if you've got electric scales but if you're going to use something like this or you can't zero them for some reason then you are going to have to find the, the weight of this or the mass of this, find the mass of this with the washing up liquid in it and then do a simple subtraction to find out what the, the mass is of the washing up liquid but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm simply just going to put washing up liquid in here this one is more complicated to understand, but it is by far the actually easiest experiment to do. Right, so this is 38 grams. So I'm just gonna go back to here. I'm not gonna bother with this because it was over complicating things. And I'm just gonna write 38 grams. Oh, and it should be in grams. Great. And now I'm gonna have a look at this scale. This is, I don't know if you can see that, it's almost oh, 38. I tried to make it 40, but it, oh dear, the, the um, so my grand plan for finding the density of, of washing up liquid because it wouldn't be one has actually failed because the density of washing up liquid, according to my experiment, is about one. So I end up with 38 divided by 38, which is, I don't need to stop the filming and use a calculator for this one, it is one gram per centimetre cubed. And I could Google it, but I'm not going to bother. Okay, so what I want from you lot is find your own set of equipment at home best you can, do your best finding that stuff, find the density of some objects. Hopefully you can get a regular object, an irregular object, and a liquid, um, do your best. And um, I would like to see, what I'd like you to submit is your workings. Um, so just take a photo of them, or if you've done it on the computers, attach it to your, to your teams.